Hello, my name is Sam Koontz. Today I will pre be presenting The Tragedy of Prince Hamlet of Denmark, or Hamlet for short, by William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare wrote this play between 1599 and 1601, and it was first performed in 1609. It is also Shakespeare's longest play. It has been the basis of many modern day movies, the most popular of which being The Lion King by Disney. This scene we will be doing is part of Act 5, Scene 1. The basis of the story is that Hamlet's uncle killed his father and claimed the throne of Denmark. And later on, Hamlet went into exile until his father's ghost appeared to him, telling him to seek vengeance upon his uncle. The main characters in this story are the clown or gravedigger, Hamlet, which is the prince himself, and Hamlet's friend, Horatio, who is Hamlet's closest friend and essentially like his brother, even though they're not related. We'll be taking and joining this story right after the clown has had a conversation with another grave digger, and now Hamlet and his friend have approached and see him digging a grave. In youth when I did love, did love me, thought it very sweet. To contract, oh, time for time, oh, my, my behoove, oh, me thought it, there was nothing meet. Has this fellow no feeling of his business that he sings at grave making? Custom hath made it a property of easiness. Tis even so, the hand of little employment had the danger sense. But age when sealing his steps hath clawed me in his clutch, and hath slipped me into the land as if I'd never been such. That skull had a tongue in it, and it could sing once. How this knave jowls it to the ground, as if it were Cain's jawbone that did the first murder. It might have been the pate of a politician, whose ass now overreaches. One that might circumvent God, might it not? It might, my lord. Or a courier, which could say, Good morning, sweet lord. How dost thou do, good lord? This might be a lord, such as one that prays, my lord, such as such as one's horse, when it meant to beg, might it not? Ay, my lord. Why even so? And now, my lady worms chapless, and knocked about the muzzard with the sexton spade. Here's a fine revolution. And when we had the trick to see it, did these bones cost no more than breeding, but to play at luggets with them? Mine ache to think on it. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade, for a shrouding sheet a pit of clay was made, for such a guest as me. There's another! Why may that the, be the skull of a lawyer? Were his quitties now, his quillets, his cases, his tenures, and his tricks? Why does he suffer the rude knave now to knock him about the silence with a dirty shovel? And he and will not tell him of his action of battery? Huh! This fellow might in his time have been a great buyer of land. With his statues, his recognitions, his fines, his double vouchers, his recoveries, and his fine of fines, and his recovery of recoveries, to his fine plate full of dirt. Will his vouchers vouch him too? No more of purchases, double ones too. Then the length and breadth of the pair of indentures, the vo very conveyances of his land, will hardly live in this box, and must be the interior of himself. To have no more? <laughs> Not a jot more, my lord. 
is not parchment made from sheepskins? Aye, my lord. And of calfskins, too. They are the sheep and calves which seek out assurance in that. I speak to this fellow. Whose grave is this, sir? Oh, mine, sir, of a pit of clay for me to be made, for such is the guest of meat. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. You lie out, sir, and therefore it is not yours, for my part I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Oh, but thou dost lie in it, to be it, and say it thine. Tis, th tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, sir. Twill, ga twill away gain from me to you. Well, what man does thou dig the grave for? Oh, for no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir. But, rest her soul, she's dead. How absolute the knave is. We must speak by the card or equivocation will undo us. By Lord Horatio, these three years I have taken note of it. The age is grown so picked that the toe of the peasant comes so near the heel of the courtier. He grabs him by his kibe. How long hast thou been a grave maker? All of the days I this year, I came to it that day that our last king, Hamlet, overcame Fortin Base. How long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent to England. Aye, Mary, why was he sent to England? Why? Because he is mad. He shall recover his wits there. Or, if he don't, he is no great matter there. Why? Twill it not be seen him there? There, the men is are as well as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, even with the losing of his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. I've been a sexton here, man, a boy, thirty years. How long will a man lie in the earth here until he rots? <laughs> in faith, if he be not rotten before he die, his well have many pocket cores nowadays that'll scarce hold the lion in. He will last you some eight or nine, nine year. The tanner will last you about nine year. Why a tanner more than any other?
Why, sir? His hide is so tanned with his trade that he will keep out the water for a great while. And your water is a sort of decay out of your worse and dead body. Here's a skull. This skull has lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? Oh, a whoresome mad fellows it was. Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. I poured a flag and a rhenish on my head once. This is the same skull was Yorick's skull, the king's gesture. This? Aye, that. Let me see. Alas, poor York. I knew him well, Ferocio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now abhorred my imagination it is. My gorge rims it here. Here hung the lips that I have kissed. I know not oft. Where are your gibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merit that were not wont to set upon a table and roar, not one now to mock your own grinning, quite chap fallen. Now, get you to my lady's chamber and tell her. Tell her. Let her paint a th inch thick to favor she must. Make her laugh at that, prithee, Horatio, and tell me one thing. What is that, me lord? Do you think Alexander looked of this fashion in the earth? Even so, sir. And smelt so? Whew. Even so, my lord. To what bases, uses we may return, Horatio? Why may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it a stopping a bunghole? Ferguson, for it to consider too curiously to consider so. No, faith, not a jolt, but to follow him twither with modesty even, and likelihood to lead it, as thus, Alexander died, Alexander was buried, Alexander returned to the earth, and returned to the dust. Of earth we make a loam, and why of that loam? Where to was covenanted? Might they stop a beer barrel? Imperious chisel, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole and keep the wind away. Oh, that the earth, which kept the world in awe, soul and should patch a wall to expel the winter flaw. But soft, but soft, aside, here comes the king. Thank you very much for watching my presentation of Hamlet.